Hey fellas, welcome back to the skin tier list, the series where my girlfriend and I continue the campaign of ranking every single skin in the entirety of Paladins. It's been a bit. How you doing? In the last part of this series, we hit the milestone of finishing going through every single character from Androxus to Zin, but that doesn't mean we're done. The original tier list I modeled my series after was created just after patch 4.6 was released, meaning I've only ranked skins that were available up to that point. And over the past couple of years I've been doing these videos, the game has acquired quite the list of patches and modern skins that we haven't gone over yet. So let me ask you, are you ready for my terrible ruby takes. This time we're going to be reviewing skins in order of release, meaning we're going to be going patch by patch until we get to the modern day, whenever that'll be. As usual, this is our own subjective list. Everyone has their own thought processes, experiences, and values. This is just a compilation of our own for some sort of entertainment. That being said, for those who need a reminder, these are the things we value the most in terms of skin rankings. The general quality of the skin, the amount of interesting and creative notable details, although too much detail can be noisy, how well the general theme was executed, plus whether or not we enjoy the theme itself or even recognize it, of course, although we're not going to be removing points if we don't recognize the theme. And lastly, how well or creatively the skin reflects the character it's made for, as well as if it reflects the game itself to a reasonable fashion. Some skins tend to go really overboard in directions that I feel don't really fit in the game, but yes, crossover skins are different, and I'll mention the change in values when I actually get to some of them. Alrighty, I'm pretty sure that's everything. Let's go. Beginning with Azan's premiere, patch 4.7, aka Absolution, with Marauder Tyra. At the very least, it is high quality, but I've always thought of this skin as very noisy. The texture of the skin itself especially accelerates this what the f am I looking at feeling, plus tryptophobia. Ugh. The prevalent fin details are okay, but the big one on her head is a bit wacky. Not really my thing. It's really not glance friendly. There's so much noisy details that it's kind of hard to even really pinpoint the interesting ones, such as the fact that she's a turtle. I didn't know that until I was literally looking for it. There's a bit too many details due to trying to kind of smorgasbord together too many themes in my opinion. It's got some pirate in there as well as several different kinds of general aqua stuff. I do think there's a lot of good details in here, just way too many. And the trade-off to all those details isn't even really good. I'll be real, it's kind of ugly at a glance. The weapon is, eh, it, it works for what it is, but it's just another burr gun that Tyre has so many of. Nothing special. I don't mean to go so hard in the very first skin, but I've never enjoyed this one. You can definitely tell the effort that went into this skin. Unfortunately, I just kind of feel like none of it really worked out that well. Just kind of looks like a disgusting mishmash of underwater growth. Honestly, that's probably what they were going for, but to me, it just, it just looks gross. It's not satisfying, and like I said, it's very noisy. Also, for some reason, it doesn't have a unique firebomb. I remember a lot of people complaining just how much Paladin's quality has dropped because of this non-unique firebomb, which I think is f***ing stupid, but <laughs> I feel like it does kind of reflect how people weren't really that happy about this skin. C tier. High quality, at least. Can't knock it for that. In fact, these days, with all the modern skins, D tier is kind of going to be the new F tier, but yeah, I doubt I'm going to be putting any of these modern skins in F tier, but I don't know. We'll wait and see. Royal Mark Tyra. Obviously, the recolor of the previous. The fins look awful, um, but the rest of the colors are quite a bit better. Kind of. I didn't like the fins too much anyway, so this one goes above. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention every single skin is ordered, by the way. Anyway, onto Sati's very first skin on this list, Sea Queen Sati. So like, there's all these women on her. It's kind of the same deal as like that occasional decision of, let's just slap a bunch of faces on here as generic detail. Better than some, but a bit clunky. Although admittedly, they do remind me of like the front of a ship. I'm pretty sure they were supposed to do that, and I think that's pretty cool. That being said, everything else is perfect. Her skin, like, her skin skin is very interesting. It's like kind of half fish, half part of her actual like clothing. It kind of seems like she's wearing nothing but also wearing something which is good for the theme but also good for <laughs> fan service reasons i'm sure but yeah that skin design like her skin skin design makes the entire skin especially alongside all the gold lining atlantean that's the word her glock is really good aesthetically detail wise quality wise all that really good that being said and this is kind of a subtle petty complaint it does kind of give off the feeling of like oh this elegant natural swimming around in the ocean fish lady is just like holding a glock it feels a little bit jarring in that regard and thus i feel like it doesn't fit the skin perfectly i can't describe it all that well, but maybe you get what I mean. Tiny, tiny complaint. Also, side tangent, I personally don't really enjoy the sound design of the gun. In fact, it's pervasive enough for me to just want to use her default. But in this list, I'm mostly ranking the skins aesthetically specifically, less so stuff like voice packs or VFX. I will certainly commend skins for that and possibly push them up due to some really good ones. Realistically, I just can't buy and use every single skin and therefore be well versed in every single voice pack or special effects. So, unfortunately, as I always have, I'm just going to be taking those as bonuses. If they don't have those, I'm not going to take anything away from the skin. But if they do have them and they're really good, I'm might give him a few extra points for it. Anyway, back to the skin. Another tiny, tiny complaint, the little glowy color in the middle of the gun really doesn't match the whole entire skin. It's blue, yeah, but it's not the same blue and that bothers me. The fins are done right in the skin, and speaking of which, they actually gave her a little cape too, split down the middle like the back fin of a fish. It's a strange detail that doesn't harken back to anything Sati related, so I don't really know why they added it, but they did, man, it's cool. There's a tiny bit of clipping, but it's hardly noticeable. I should have said this a little bit earlier, but I think her hair and her face is really cute too. Kind of a wacky style, and I think it looks lovely. The whole thing kind of reminds me of those Atlantean characters from that old 90s. 1988 Uncle Scrooge comic about NFTs. I'm serious. I also find the voice back quite amusing for whatever that's worth. Be sure not to 
not to waste my time. One of the easiest S tiers of my life. Crimson Tide Sati. This one's a tough one to rank beside Sea Queen. There's a lot of better and a lot of slightly worse. The Glock looks a tiny bit more fitting in the theme of the skin. Kind of reminds me of some kind of like volcanically crafted gun surrounded by coral. Pretty cool looking and I think it fits the skin a little bit more as opposed to the last one that just kind of looked like fancy Glock. The colors on the skin itself, the white and red, is slightly better. They're both beautiful though, but the hair is black, which although is a nice change of pace, the default did have a gradient, which is a little bit better. But yeah, the colors on both of them are lovely. I think the default's a tiny bit better, but it's really close. Leviathan Yagaroth, the first big Yago monster skin. A lot of hype behind this one. Yago is obviously a character that's not super easy to make skins for, but everyone was pretty interested to see what they would come up with. This skin looks pretty cool if you don't think about it too much. The loss of her two little arms is a bit of a tragedy. Her waving emote doesn't make any sense at all with the skin. Proportion is kind of the name of the game, I think. The face is a lot larger than default Yagos, and as a result, the face to body ratio looks a bit derpy. Not particularly intimidating as I'm sure they intended. There's a lot to the skin that it loses from the default, not in all terrible ways, although it does inherently make it less interesting unlike her default. Her eyes, those little arms like I said, her mask thing, its quality to some extent, and definitely its sharpness are definitely kind of lost in translation here. Everything's more rounded and slimy, not all bad as it's obviously supposed to be fishy, but I feel like perhaps it went a little bit too far, making it aesthetically look more like some kind of sea slug. I really like the theme itself, like I like what they were going for. Definitely a good choice for an adaptation into some kind of Yagaroth format. The color scheme as well is very pretty, and although the sliminess does kind of make everything look less sharp and dangerous, it does make it look all fishy and kind of satisfying. Plus, the scales are nice. The fins are a nice addition, but still, I wish all the spines were spikier and it looked more threatening. Like, you ever seen a rockfish? Those things are fucking scary. The maw is still a big ass maw. I enjoy all the inside colors looking all molten like, plus the gill looking things, almost kind of reminiscent of Yag's original eyes in some fashion. There's lots of good things like that, but the prevailing issue is still its proportions. Looks a bit gorfy for sure. Looking at her straight on, her arms just kind of look like human arms. The thing that probably bothers me personally the most is the sliminess, although good, really makes makes these like separating line texture things stand out a hell of a lot. It really doesn't help with my opinion of the quality of it. Oh yeah, and it like also kind of tries to blink but fails. It's funny. B tier. If you can get over the gorfiness of it, it looks pretty good. But if you can't, it just kind of looks goofy. And I can't. <laughs> and now for a change of pace. Salt Io. A cool weapon to go burr. It's really cool. <laughs> it's a baller weapon, but it's certainly like one of those non-weapon weapons. I definitely have a hard time seeing this being in an actual fight. To some extent, it also doesn't even fit the rest of the skin. It's way more detailed and has its own color scheme. The whole skin uh, is certainly pops. The outfit is pleasant for the theme, a little plain, especially the pants. Her tail is untouched as well, nothing new there. Nothing to replace her braids, and pretty much the whole hair and ears are all recolored from the original. Although I do like her headphones instead of her crest there, that's a nice touch. Her dog is also all glitchy and super cool. I like the wacky green hair for whatever it's worth. There's also weird self-promotion on their own game. Bruh, I'm playing the game, you don't have to advertise your game to me. <laughs> now, the face has always looked a little weird even after they tried to fix it. Specifically specifically her mouth. I think the jewelry is nice and tasteful, I think it's very pretty. The whole thing does end up seeming like a much better street style skin. With a few of the same faults with skins in this theme, albeit this one clearly has a bit more effort put into it with the weapon and the furriness. Not in the details though. Even though I don't like boring real life clothing looking skins, something about the textures look really nice I will say. Very satisfying and one of the best DJ skins for sure. I also really appreciate the idea of this skin kind of spawning from all those previous controversies with Pepper, making his theme literally based on a community inside joke. And that is awesome. Her headphones are also a little funny too because that is not her ears. They're up there, idiot. <laughs> the skin is like really hard capped. I feel like it really doesn't belong in Paladins as a whole, but I feel like everything was executed about as well as it could have been. Everything is really satisfying and pleasant. Aside from a little bit of weirdness in her face, which I'll be real, isn't really that bad. I think it deserves A. I know some people don't like the skin because furry, but okay. Sigma Vivian was supposed to be rank here, but we accidentally already did it. So, oops. All right, we're moving on to Seven's premiere patch, patch 5.1, Schism. Okay, so real quick, we're going to talk about Seven's recolors. A lot of modern characters are released with a recolor or two of their default skin, and these days one of those skins will often have one or two things model-wise slightly altered to be a little bit more unique. I normally would never rank these things because at the end of the day they're clearly just basic recolors packaged with the character's default, but considering this 7 guy was released with 7 slightly unique recolors, I thought it'd be fun to take a look at them real quick, give them a ranking, kind of the code green treatment. I'm not ranking these in the actual list itself, I'm just going to rank them next to each other for fun. Each description is going to be pretty quick just because there isn't a whole lot to say. 
that each skin has some separate cool markings on their back, and although it adds something, it really isn't enough to sway our thoughts. The masks are definitely the things we're focusing on. In last place, not including his default or his golden skin, we have Biting Wind. All of these skins look cool. This one still looks cool. It's just not quite as interesting. Like, there's a little cloth instead of any articulate mask or anything. The design on the cloth also isn't earning any brownie points. Not trying to knock it too much or anything, it's a good change of pace, but it's still the worst. Also, the design on the cape reminds me of Dredge and Fuck Dredge. Death Orc is next, just the most generic looking one, and the most similar in concept to the default. Just feels like first draft shit, the uncreative version of a slightly differing mask. A little bit different, but not as cool as his actual default. The back of the gun also has a weird bit of yellow, like it doesn't really fit. It almost feels like a mistake. Next up is Crimson Guard, although keep in mind these next three are all clearly the best ones and are pretty hard to choose favorites from. I feel like this one is really well-rounded color-wise. It might actually be my favorite in that regard specifically. The mask almost feels like what Biting Wind wants to be, kind of blank with just the single eye. Looks pretty cool, but it is less interesting inherently due to the blankness of the mask itself. It nails the blankness, but it's still just blank. Also, the cape design seems to fit it the least out of any of these skins. Second is my personal favorite, Ivy Sentinel. Has a bit too much green, perhaps. Not as much color variation as it could. Kind of camo-y, though. I really like the almost medieval helmet-looking mask. It's really creative-looking, albeit simple. Might not be too fair, but it also works well with Pandemonium 7's gun, and vice versa. Like I said, this is my personal favorite out of these, although Deathly Parlor is just realistically the best one. It has probably the best colors and the most detailed face. Looks dope. The only complaint is that the idea for having a skull as a mask is kind of generic, but I mean, it's executed pretty well to where I don't really care. It also has the best cape design in my opinion. There you go, there's my little ranking of the seven skins. Like I said, I'm not putting them in the actual list, I just wanted to go over them real quick for fun. Now onto the actual skins in this patch, Schoolyard Maeve. Very cute. The colors are kind of all over the place, similar to Student of Magic Vivian, it kind of makes sense since she's like a student, disorganized, doesn't have anything in order, doesn't have their own identity filled out yet, they're working on it, alright? <laughs> I always think back to the skin when it comes to dual theming. Like for instance, me and Skillzy are never exactly the most fond of skins like Academic Sky, like this mix of the popular schoolgirl theme, meshing with the armored magic -y look, makes a theme we normally wouldn't care much for actually look really pleasant and creative. Like, this is one of my favorite theme combinations in the entire game. And yes, before anyone tells me, I know they probably got a lot of inspiration from that anime that I don't give a shit about. I am aware, no need to remind me. Kind of a wacky comment, but compared to Academics, guys, this is a much more accurate to real life dress code in a school, which I guess is good? I, can't, I don't know. <laughs> the ears and tail are very lovely touches as usual. The isometric armor is really cool, really catches the eye, kind of a reverse callback to the original. The quality of modern skins is almost always great, but the armor actually seems even better than the usual, especially at the time. The knickknacks and accessories are all great details. In some cases, they can be a bit annoying and overdone, but in this case, it does help the, in my opinion, dull schoolgirl theme to feel a bit more alive, which is the kind of cutesiness of the skin as well, the cluttered student kind of deal. It kind of has the faces on armor conundrum, but I don't know, it really doesn't bother me here. The shoulder's a little bit bulky due to it, but eh. As usual, the hair is also very cute. Plush! The knives aren't anything super special, although we actually kind of like the thickness of it as opposed to the, uh, you know, normal knives. And I could do without the accessories on the knives specifically, but it does represent the theme well. Oh, and I like these funny claws in our hands too. It's just a surprisingly well-rounded skin, and one I keep on surprising myself by thinking of when I think of great theme combinations and just good skins in general. Plus, bonus points for making a rather boring theme seem very interesting and creative. S tier. Study Hall Maeve. That feeling of clutter with the color of the skin previously is pretty much gone here and not in a way that takes away from the theme itself. In fact, I really enjoy the more consistent color scheme here. Almost makes me feel like this kind of silver slash gray with pink are some kind of underrated color combo. I should make a color combo tier list. There's even a wee bit of gradient in her hair with this one. Also, the tie is now plaid. Wow. Her eye color is also this nice soft blue now, which fits with her new weapon effects that are also now blue. This one is better. Class President Ray. Although kind of sharing the same general themes as Maeve's skin, the whole dual theme isn't as present and upfront. Looks a little more schooly than warrior-y. Plus the legs are bare and kind of dull. I guess it's more like a cheerleader outfit, almost? You know, short skirt, school logo and such. I have no clue how that reflects Class President, but uh, yeah. It really fits Ray though, herself, like personality-wise. There's a bit of an interesting dichotomy compared to Maeve's skin, as the Ray skin has put more detail in the outfit and less detail in the warrior-esque armor. The humorous thing is that the result of that is just less detail overall. Aside from that, it's a pretty cute design, like nothing bad at all. Just not really as much going on, I feel. At least compared to the nature of the theme that they're going for. I feel like it could have been a little bit cooler, but it's pretty okay and cute for what it is. Not to mention that the quality in general at this point in time is, of course, very good. And what's going on in terms of detail is pretty alright. I love the sword, I love the red skin, plenty of straps are fun, and I quite like her glasses and hair and such. Very, very pleasant. The hair is also a little... I get that that's an engine thing, but it is worth bringing up, as it does kind of look like some kind of tasty cheese if you think about it too hard. It's a very pretty skin that's definitely lacking on the bottom half. It's just a whole lot of legs. I wish there was some more armor or something to push the dual theming that was pushed with the Maeve skin, but oh well. A tier. 
Valedictorian Ray. The blue skin looks a little too bright, I think? It's not too bad or anything, I just feel like that's the main thing holding this recolor back. It looks a tiny bit weird. Aside from that, the contrast of the colors I actually quite like. Even so, though, the original's contrast are just straight up better. Like, the gold really helped a lot of the details stand out. This one, I hardly even noticed the glasses and the sword, for instance. I like the uniqueness of the skin color, but it does still look a bit odd. Her eyes are really pretty, though. Despite that, this one is lower. Dark Drake Azan. Azan's very first skin, and a terrific reference to the original design idea. The dragon proportions are executed flawlessly. It looks a little cluttered when his armor is kind of juxtapositioned to his chest, but yeah, he's like essentially wearing half a set of armor. <laughs> looks pretty cool, I'm down for that. I'm not the biggest fan of these little armor dudes sticking out of the shoulder pads, but I like that his wings are very different to the OG despite adding some noise to his shoulder area. Although, like, what are they doing? Are they holding invisible trumpets? Other than that, everything is really well executed. The quality of everything is immaculate, and his dragon skin and face look great. Great. Really well adapted and his horns look pretty cool too. His wings and tail look great as well. His hammer also does look really cool, but it does feel a lot less hefty. Like the sound design is all fushi, like it carries a lot of weight. Meanwhile, visually it really doesn't show. The eye is a little strange as well. I don't think Azan really uses eye symbology or whatever. Like what exactly is this reference to? Is it something in, you know, his original design or what is, what is, what's going on here? I personally would just rather use the purple recolor of the original. Feels much heavier as the skin's weapon is a little cluttered. It's not bad, it's just the feel of the skin's hammer isn't nearly as good. But yeah, the whole skin is a little bit cluttered, but everything still works really well together, and the dragon stuff is crazy cool. S tier. Willow Willow. Probably the cleanest rendition of a robot skin. It meshes well with Willow herself, it doesn't conflict with the personality at all. Unlike other Omega skins that kind of just completely delete the personality of the original character, the whole skin looks and feels very perfect and sleek as a concept, and even to some extent, actually. The proportions are perfect, which robot skins seem to struggle with sometimes. I love the wings, the legs look real pokey and delicate like a bee stinger. They somehow made her robot bionicle looking face actually kind of cute. Oddly, the skin gives Willow some strange... Uh, thickness that she never really has otherwise. Uh, no comment. I don't know why I brought this up. <laughs> the weapon does look cool, albeit simple, though it is also a little bit bulkier than I wish it was. Everything else is designed so daintily and aerodynamically, and the weapon doesn't reflect that just enough to be annoying. Even so, though, the effects are top tier. It's the best robot skin in years. It may not have quite as much detail in some skins, but I feel it has the perfect, simple amount, especially for a champion like Willow. It has a great and consistent flow of quality and detail, making it feel full and pristine, despite its actual lower detail count compared to some. Like, this is actually one of those skins that kind of defies my values a little bit. Like, the robot skins kind of don't really belong in Paladins that much. It feels a little bit more futuristic than should technically be in Paladins, right? But I feel like this robot skin in particular was just executed so well that I just don't give a shit. Somehow, even though I feel like it doesn't even fit in the game all that well, it just seems like the perfect skin for Willow. And I honestly doubt many people would disagree. It also goes perfectly with the 8-bit speeder. Awesome. SS. Yellow Jacket Willow. Okay, this one is really tough to compare. Like, both of these skins have absolutely top tier color combinations. Yellow Jacket especially has this cool kind of color theme here, similar to, as the name would suggest, a kind of wasp or something. Obviously, that's fitting for Willow's behavior and the pokiness of the skin, you know, with the wings and the legs and whatnot, alongside her kind of annoying nature. We had to nitpick extremely hard to figure out which one we liked more, but the original is just a little bit cleaner looking, plus the two smallest nitpicks of all time. Yellow Jacket's weapon effect color wasn't changed and doesn't fit as well, even though it's purple, which still fits just Fine. And lastly, it doesn't match the 8-bit speeder so it's worse. Jurassic Ying. Terrible skin for Ying. <laughs> I almost feel like anyone else could fit the idea better. There's not a whole lot to like about this skin overall. The leather clothing is super skin tight, which not only did, like wouldn't work like that, it also just doesn't really look that good. I don't want to like <laughs> accuse it of this or something, but it does feel like its only purpose was to show off Ying's shapeliness rather than actually go for a quality skin. It's hard to get over just how jarring the skin is. Like the reveal was super confusing. Magic cave woman lady? What? On the other hand, the weapon is actually pretty detailed and cool. Kind of feels like dark magic-y wicker stuff. I think if they went more in that direction, it could be nice and fit Ying a bit more, but what they did here just feels kind of forced. Like, details? Oh, bones and bird skulls and such. Cause why? Caveman? I don't know. What should go where those papers on our ass would be? Oh, a big chunk of meat. Cause, I don't know. Caveman shit. Like, it gives it a unique aesthetic, I'll give it that. It just feels lame and repetitive, and the details feel arbitrary. Something about how it's made also makes the quality not look that great either. I like her, like, skin, like the color and the markings and such, plus her face, which is kind of just Ying's face, but still. Her hair is kind of dull, albeit an interesting color, but that's about it. The whole skin somehow feels naked, despite being filled with rather arbitrary details. Except her ears. They're cool. Again, the weapon is cool. I I'm less about all the junk thrown together kind of themes, but I do like its little antler and skull 
dull design there. I wish they went in some other direction with the rest of this skin, since I feel like there could have been other equally unique ideas that could work alongside it. Also, her effects mostly revolve around Aurora Borealis for some reason? Why? Nature? I don't know. Like I said, cool and unique enough ideas, but execution is so strange and even kind of ugly. Honestly, the only thing saving the skin from straight up looking ugly is the fact that Ying is Ying, and Ying is also, like said, shapely. So that is a C tier. Just a quick note here, it looks like we did forget the Rambo skin that was kind of released awkwardly between Schism and the next patch. So don't worry, we haven't forgotten it completely. I just realized now that we forgot about it pretty late in the editing process, so we're going to cover it first thing next video. Anyway, continue. Okay, next up we have the Monster Cat crossover patch, aka patch 4.2. Now, I considered the possibility that these would be crossover skins, but really, there's a lot more creative transcribing with these guys, rather than just essentially copying a character from another series, similar to Genlock or the Ruby skins, which we'll rank later. So like, there's a ton of inspiration obviously pulled from the artists in this crossover patch while still having a lot of creative liberties in order to make a pretty interesting and creative skin. So keep in mind, although these are technically crossover skins, I'm not really going to be treating them too much like they are full crossover skins. Starting with the, oh, this means I'm going to have to try to pronounce these names. Uh, Gigi Magri, Gigi Magri, or is it just Guga Magri? I don't know. Uh, Gigi Magri Sky. I'm going to go with that. Okay. This is straight off the bat, really pretty skin. Shiny effects really catch the eye immediately. A lot of these monster cat skins are pretty simple, all things considered. This one is no exception. Not a ton of details in the main skin, and honestly, it really doesn't need it either. I feel like it does slightly lack some skyness. Probably a bit of a byproduct of it being a semi crossover skin, like I said. Like her hair specifically, although pretty interesting, is definitely not a uh, sky. Her weapon has plenty of cool details. Kind of hard to see the weapon as anything more than another part of the body, though. It definitely meshes with the skin very well, but it doesn't exactly stand out by itself. Although the mouth is a pretty interesting, albeit kind of cliche, detail. Ooh, Zappies. The face on the weapon really isn't my style, but still pretty detailed and cool. The effects are pretty powerful for the course, all good. The music in-game always bothers me because I can't turn it off and shit. That's less talking about aesthetics, but still. If I'm trying to listen to music, it is a little bit annoying, so I can't help but bring it up. Also, her ultimate sound is still devilish's f***ing orgasm sounding explosion. <laughs> I guess I don't really have a problem with it. It's just kind of weird. Like, why don't they change it? They changed literally everything else. <laughs> You gotta love those high heel claw thingies. Those things are sick. Lastly, her hair is super creative and looks pretty nice. But like I said, I think it lacks a little bit of skyness that we've kind of come to expect at this point. Still obviously nice though. No real complaints aside from that. I also still can't believe they got rid of her scarf in general. I kind of miss that thing. Like I still try to look at how they're going to implement the scarf into these new skins before remembering, oh yeah, the scarf doesn't exist in her default anymore. Anyway, yeah, pretty great skin. High quality shininess and armor. A little less slick than some others, but eh, very solid. Pretty much no complaints. Forgot to say S tier. So S tier. VIP GG. What did I choose? Maji? Magri? Whatever. Sky. I like the colors on this one straight up more. Much more defined contrasts. The mask is the clear main difference. I think it's dope that they added it, but it's really not my style. But realistically, it certainly doesn't take anything away in the long run. Just extra details and a great addition. I would normally adore masks if it weren't for the fact that this one just in particular isn't really my thing. There's this weird little arching line thingy on her forehead though, which kind of makes her look like a cyborg. That's kind of odd. Anyway, this one goes above. Justin O'Conn. Basically the epitome of of the concept that I talked about a while ago where you just like, you look at the skin and you go, yeah, that sure is a con skin with it just being a samey giant chunk of armor. But it's probably the best epitome of that concept to date. Again, it's very simple in a good way, but also in a slightly noisy way. There's a lot of the same colors too, which no doubt contributes to that feeling. It's not the biggest deal, but I do get a bit confused depending on where I'm looking. The effects though are great as usual and the textures with this one are especially cool looking. There's a lot of great big details alongside a few confusing ones, like the shoulder blades that look great, but also feel kind of huge as well as the those knees, like balls. Why? Oh, I like the cape. There's a face in there in a style that I don't really like, similar to Sky's weapon, but it still looks cool and I like the implementation. The sword details are freaking dope. The swords as horns and those like back thingies, but especially on the gun considering he actually shoots them. Aside from that detail, the gun's pretty dope. Nothing crazy, but I really like its shape rather than Khan's like usual stubby revolver thing. The design kind of reminds me of those old PNG looking guns back in the day. Looks a tiny bit ham fisted, but still looks cool. I don't like his face. I think it's ugly. Thankfully, he's got that lion looking chest face that looks better. Kind of draws your attention to that instead. A tier. VIP Justin O. Some of the clutter is actually helped with the color differentiations. Kind of helps my brain figure out what's going on a bit better. Not to mention the colors in general are just cooler. Plus the tiger pattern looks really good. The swords and cape look way more standout too. Nice and shiny. This one is better for sure. Quick intermission. I do want to mention that Bomb King's Crash King 47 and Crash King 48 were also released here, but I really don't feel like talking about them. They're just basic recolors aside from, oh, they're frowning now and they have a belt. Crazy. Every other difference is just stuff that's been deleted from the original, making them even less interesting. I think it's cool that we have them, but they're not really that important. And we just kind of put them at the bottom of C where all the other underwhelming recolors go. Intermission over. 
Whipped cream Cassie. Boy, oh boy, I want to talk about this one. All right, you got to understand a little bit of history with me personally about this. My original reason for doing YouTube stuff in general and at all was heavily influenced by the fact that I made this little list of the last time every single character in the game got a skin. Cassie, who is my main, I forgot to mention, was at the very bottom. At that point, it had been over four years since she'd ever gotten a damn skin. And she was leading the pack above Pip, above Moji, above everyone else. I'm aware that at this point, there might be other characters who've waited for longer. But keep in mind, at that point, there was still a lot less characters, so it was a bit bigger of a deal, I suppose you could say. Regardless, you could say I was a little excited when I saw a, a teaser with a certain crossbow in it. And you know, what other character has a crossbow aside from apparently Sky? So yeah, I was mildly hyped. I awaited with bated breath for the patch. And here's where I present to you an accurate recreation of my thought processes during its reveal. Please enjoy. One is going to be available via Prime Gaming and is Whipped Cream Cassie. This one's probably one I'm oh. excited for most. I was like Cassie's skills so. because... I well, another four years can't take that long. I think a great way to demonstrate my disappointment with this skin is this. Look at Sky's skin that came out the same patch. And now look at Cassie's. Look at Khan's skin that came out the same patch. Now look at Cassie's. Look at the absolute detail behemoth that is f***ing Pandemonium 7. Now look at Cassie's. This not only gives off the impression that there could have been so much more, looking at all these great skins surrounding it makes me feel almost like there should be so much more. For a modern skin, this is so lackluster. There is nothing there. Like, you all already know my deal about human clothes. What the f*** is human clothes doing in Paladin's Big Fight Bang Boom murder? It's the absolute worst kind as well. It's literally just basic sportswear. Borderline pajamas. Like, oh my- why even f***ing bother? The quality of the clothing is, like, good as usual with these skins. It's mildly satisfying. It's not the best. But it's pretty usual, especially with these kinds of basic skins. But I'm actually like at a loss, like mildly speechless at the lack of anything to even talk about. It's just clothes and a top. Like what the f*** else is there? That's it. That's f***ing it. This came out alongside Pandemonium 7 for God's sake and Cassie gets PJ. Like no sliding to the actual artist. I've heard her stuff. I enjoy it. But this is just such a nothing skin. It actually just feels like, you know, a crossover skin. But instead of a crossover with anything interesting, it's like they just took a person and put her into paladins. It's, ha, I don't just like the hair necessarily. It's pretty interesting, but it looks so strangely out of place to the point where it kind of just looks like a wig. The odd pulsating glowiness of the hair also doesn't help it one bit. In fact, it looks really fucking weird. The only real silver lining and the only reason I don't actually mind the skin's existence is the weapon. It hard carries the entire skin, and it's hardly even that good. It looks sleek and the shots feel nice, but I can't shake the feeling of just how non-spectacular it is. I do definitely want to give the weapon the credit it deserves though, since I do use it by itself occasionally. It does though look minorly plasticky alongside the very unsubtle and intrusive monster cap balls just sitting there in the way. Like really? Speaking of unsubtle and intrusive, we haven't even brought up the absolute tumor of a Ziggs the skin gave us. Ziggs is a portion of the Cassie skin that exudes the most amount of creative potential. And if the work is actually put in, it always ends up being a banger. And I know I've already jokingly talked about this a bit in the last part, but it's still probably the worst thing aesthetically I've seen in the entire game. Like, the whole skin is so disappointing in general, but at least it's an extra non-offending skin for my favorite character, right? This thing looks so uncanny and utterly lazy. It's legitimately the reason I never use this skin. Like, this isn't just a couple small details that would knock an otherwise A-tier skin into B-tier. This is the largest eyesore I've ever seen on a skin ever. If it weren't for the weapon, I'd actually just try my best to forget about the entire damn thing. I know it's kind of goofy to get worked up about skins, but I mean, come on, give me some slack. I've waited so long. And reminder again, this skin came out alongside all these beautiful, gorgeous, amazing looking skins. I've been watching every patch for like six, seven, eight years, whatever it's been at this point. And Cassie gets PJs. It's disappointing, okay? By itself, it's dull. Given Cassie's skin situation, it's disappointing, terribly timed, and feels like a little more than a sellout. I hate to pay fucking Amazon for this shit, dude. This is a super run-on segment, and I do not care. I am perfectly aware that there's zero way any Cassie skin would have lived up to my expectations at the point in time that the skin came out. Like after four years, I was bound to be disappointed, but the thing is, I knew that. I was aware of that, and I was ready for it. I was bracing myself for a generally disappointing experience. The only thing I didn't brace myself for was for it to be boring. Somehow the skin managed to take everything I value most in skins, you know, you know that list I bring up at the beginning of all these ranking videos? I feel like the skin did its best to perfectly defy all of them. It doesn't reflect Cassie at all, it doesn't reflect Paladins at all, which all of the other Monster Cat skins do, by the way, just not Cassie's. The theme, the theme is the artist, so I guess that doesn't really count. There is zero details to speak of aside from the travesty that is f***ing SCP-4853 over here, and the only mildly detailed portion, the weapon, isn't even that interesting. And even the quality, like, it's good, but I'd be lying if I said it was the best. 
best. And absolutely nothing accentuates it regardless. I am sorry. People worked on this skin. I, I do feel bad. But this skin is worthless to me. It's hard to express just the realization of, oh god, I'm gonna have to wait another four years, aren't I? As it was being released. And with the hindsight that I now have, I feel silly for even being hyped for it in the first place. And with all that being said, D tier. <laughs> Boss fight Koga. See, this is pretty much exactly what I mean when I think of creatively adapting something into the game here from something outside the game itself. Something that would generally be considered kind of boring, like a musical artist or something like that. It's simple, clean, slick, very aesthetically pleasing, and thus accentuates every reason I dislike whipped cream. <laughs> the, the skin, not the artist or the food. I think in this skin, the logos they stuck on aren't nearly as egregious or in your face. In fact, they don't even look half bad, even if there's a decent few. The mask and the runes are brought over beautifully from the artist. In fact, the runes kind of look like they're like powering his weapons and stuff. It's pretty dope. I also enjoy the adaptation of his flappy cloak stuff, alongside changing the random chunk of armor into a lovely little pouch. Again, it's simple but nice attention to detail all throughout the skin. I even like the armor alongside the slick looking vest slash cloak stuff, like the slight clunkiness actually makes it a tiny bit more interesting. Then of course his weapons all look lovely. His guns have a simple complexity that Cassie's was sorely lacking. I'm sorry to bring it up again, I am still upset after talking about it, but yeah the weapons are super satisfying and the claws are, you know, they're claws, but they're equally aesthetically pleasing and fun to use. Everything about this skin screams quality and simplicity, which really isn't that easy to nail. It's a terrific standalone skin for the uninformed, but also a great and creative tribute to the artist it's based on. S tier. Pandemonium 7. Okay, funnily enough, compared to the previous skin in the same kind of vein, 7's skin is actually a bit lower quality somehow, despite being made later. Uh, okay. Even so, the extreme abundance of interesting and chaotic detail comes naturally alongside the skin's incredibly unique quote-unquote theme. I still don't really even understand what the theme is, but I adore it. Now, this skin is busy, but the thing is we've never really come across a skin that's noisy due to the abundance of really quality details. Like, it is hard to tell what's going on at a glance, and I think that's for sure its biggest downside. Once you start breaking it down, though, this skin has some of the coolest details we've seen in any skin in general. The glowy colors, textures, and effects all look great. The skulls, albeit there are a lot of skulls I should admit, it's kind of redundant. And the way the torso and head are kind of separated from the rest of the body are great independent details. Meanwhile, the ball and ass locked up cape wing looking ass things, as well as the half veiled skull, are fantastic adaptations from Seven himself. Those arms sticking up, I will say, since the skin doesn't focus as much on them as with Vatu's mayhem skin, do look a little bit awkward, but they still serve as an interesting callback to its kind of brother skin in mayhem. The weapon is oddly like the most uninteresting part, which isn't really saying much because it's still really cool looking. No complaints there, fits the skin perfectly. There's some little spirit guys that come out of the gun when you shoot it, I think that's pretty cool. And hey, if you like the default gun better, you can always just use Ivy Sentinel's gun. Works with the skin pretty much just as well. As for the entire skin, if it weren't for the general noisiness and slightly lower quality, it could legit be a contender for one of the best skins in the game in my opinion. S tier. Alright, that's gonna do it for this part. Like said, the first thing we're gonna hit in the next part is the Rambo skin, and then we're gonna be getting into the corruption stuff. I'm pretty excited for that. Real talk quick though, I've somewhat recently went well past 500 subscribers. Pretty sick. I'm not one for big thank yous really, but I do really appreciate the support. So yeah, just uh, yeah, keep having fun with the game. Even if you're subbed, feel free to unsub or anything, there's no pressure. But uh, for me, this does mean I'm past the threshold of being able to monetize my videos now. So like, what's the quota on that? Is it chill if I do it? Do I ask my audience first? I, I didn't really think I'd get this far, so I thought I might as well ask the folks who got me here first. Is it cool? Let me know. Anyway, regardless, usual outro here. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to keep up with the upcoming parts of the series or just to help me out. Always appreciated. No pressure. But uh, yeah, have a lovely day, evening, afternoon, or morning, and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.